Author and speaker, Julie Power, shares the truths of God's Word in a masterfully woven story of three women who received Jesus as their Lord. Julie's novel, Four Weeks, draws us into the lives of these three women over the first four weeks of their salvation and discovery of their new life in Christ. Today, I want you to meet Julie Powers. I'm so glad that you've tuned in today. Thank you so much for being a part of this Faith Builders broadcast. We are thrilled today to have on the set with us author and speaker Julie Powers, and she has just released her book, Four Weeks, and it is a book that is going to transform lives all across this nation. I wanted her to come on and share with us from this book because I believe this is a tool that God is going to use in so many ways to help people understand a lot of basic truths. And um, we have in our ministry a publishing company, and Julie is our first author to come through the publishing company that we just put together, Faith to Faith Publishing. And as we were going through her novel, I was so impressed with how, how masterfully she used a fictional story to preach the gospel. If you have loved ones who maybe have just got saved or have a lot of questions about basic truths in the Word of God, especially about prayer, especially about hearing from God, I encourage you, this is a book that will help them. It will answer the questions in a way that's not preachy. It'll answer the questions in a way that will really stick with them. So I want you to welcome to the set with me today, Julie Powers. Julie, thank you so much for coming on thank the you. program and sharing with us about your book. I know this is going to be something that changes so many lives. And I want you to first First of all, just uh, share a little bit about yourself, about, um, you know, how you um, came to this desire to put this into a book. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. I, the, the genesis of this book is uh, a, I came to my uh, mature faith uh, at about the age 35, and um, I was looking for things uh, trying to learn everything I could out of, out of the Word of God. Um, and uh, there were so many things that I didn't know. And uh, as I learned, as I grew, I started to collect these things that I didn't know. And um, uh, things about how do, how do you pray? How do you read the Bible? How do you look something up? Um, what is this praying in tongues? all of those kinds of things. I, I wanted to make sure that I captured and remembered what that was. And I wanted to put it in a book. And I started with a well, kind of a how-to early believer book. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the Lord directed me, uh, no, I want you to put it into a novel. And that is not something I ever had in my mind that I would ever do. But the power of a story to give a message, uh, uh, the Lord used that when he was on earth. Yes. He used a story. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. What a great um, storyline that you put together as well. Tell us a little bit about the characters. Tell us a little bit about uh, the storyline. You begin with these women at a, a Christian event and they are answering an altar call. Tell me about how that, that transpired and a little bit about each of the characters. So the, the, what I wanted to do is I wanted to, uh, wanted to present the very beginning of their faith. And um, uh, they, 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 they responded to the altar call at this event. They filled out a card and uh, a couple of uh, local churches reached out to them. Yes. And this is the story of Connie and Heather and Margaret. Uh, Connie is a empty nester, uh, just trying to figure out what she's going to do now. Mm -hmm. uh, having been an empty nester myself at one time, uh, it can be a little disorienting. And, um, and she's also got a little bit of uh, bad, ex bad experience with churches in her history. And I know there's a lot of that out there. Yes. Uh, Heather is a 20-something uh, rebel, uh, pierced eyebrow, 
purple hair uh, kind of gal. Um, and uh, she's also homeless. Yeah. And um, uh, there's a lot about that. Uh, how do I, what do I do now? I'm homeless. The life I've been living isn't getting me where I want to go. Yeah. And then the third character is Margaret. Margaret is a retired woman, recently widowed. Her husband had just passed away a few months before this story starts. Uh, Margaret, uh, you know, what I wanted for Margaret was it's never too late yes. and you have so many opportunities. And, and as I look forward in the years to retirement, I'm going, there's so many things I could do. And that's what I wanted to encourage to happen to Margaret. So the, so the three women uh, uh, come to a new believers. They meet Pastor Dan yes. uh, and Pastor Dan um, uh, assigns each of them a mentor. And uh, the mentor pairings are a fun part of the book, really do speak a lot to what the women that are in the story are trying to accomplish. Yes. So, uh, and it's just about their journey. Uh, you get to hear what they're thinking. You get to hear the conversations they're having at their new believers meeting. You get to hear the conversations that they have with their mentors. And you get to hear the message when they go to church on Sunday morning. And it all weaves together to say, here are some of the very basic things that you will need to know or that you will come across as a new believer. Yes. I, it, I like to be able to explain some of those things in the story uh, like you would want to explain them to somebody who had come to you and asked for asked questions. Yes. I love how you had the church family, the, the different people who were mentoring, the different people in the church, uh, helping them and discipling them. And in that mentoring, in the girl who has the piercings and the purple hair, she gets mentored with, she gets partnered or paired with a mentor that is a lot different. It's not what she expected. And you even in the book kind of bring out, like she's kind of rolling her eyes back in her head saying, oh my gosh, why are they doing this to me? Tell us about her mentor. Uh, her mentor is Mr. George. Uh, Mr. George is 85 years old. He's a black male. I mean, He's, he, is, um, uh, he is the grandfather that she really needs at that moment. Yes. And um, uh, Mr. George has a, uh, a, he operates in, in the prophetic in particular situations. And uh, he gives Heather a different name, just like the Lord renamed Abraham yes. and Sarah. Uh, the, the, the power of a name to influence the rest of your life. And just that um, grandfathery, I love you regardless. I don't, I mean, I've, I've been around so long, your purple hair doesn't put me off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that because at first she was really standoff about him, but his, his genuineness yes. just really reached out to her. And as, as I was going through the story, you know, I was crying and, <laughs> you know, what's going to happen next? And it really just caught my attention. And again, these are things that are, are questions that come up in a lot of new believers' lives. These are, are, are a lot of the experiences and the questions that they would have. And the way that Julie has brought them out for us in her book, Four Weeks, is a way that will uh, stay with you because the story helps to implant it in your heart. So again, if you have questions or maybe you have loved ones or friends in your life who are new believers and they have a lot of questions, this is a really good book. And we're talking with Julie Powers, if you're just tuning in, and she is talking about her book, Four Weeks, uh, that has just recently been released. And we've got information on the screen to help you find out how you can uh, get your copy of Four Weeks. It is such a, 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 a instrument, an instrumental book for the gospel. And another thing, you talk about a lot of different topics and one specific topic that is um, kind of woven in throughout the book is the importance of prayer. And each of these girls, of course, they're all at different stages of their mm -hmm. walk with God. There's one who has kind of been in church before and she's, she's coming back and others who, you know, the, the Heather who knows nothing about prayer and um, talk to us about how that thing of, of learning how to pray comes to pass in the book. The, uh, 
I, the, the bottom line is that everybody is somewhere along the line prays, whether they call it prayer or not. Prayer is a part of who we are. I had a lot of questions about prayer, so I felt like it was really important to weave that in. Um, uh, prayer is, um, as, as, as the women learned to read in the Bible and see the things about God, they had a better understanding that God was, um, uh, God is a good God. Yes. And that he does hear prayers. And uh, there were a lot, of, uh, a lot of elementary things that I wanted to bring out, which is number one, your, your prayers need to be based in the word. Yes. If the word says you can have it, you can have it. If, the, um, if you're praying for uh, uh, loved ones, if you're, if you're working on, um, if, if you want things to change and you want your prayers to be effective, and I think in my own struggle that making sure your prayers are uh, having the effect that you want. Like they're hitting the target. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And um, uh, prayers that don't get answered, how do, you, how, do you, how do you manage that? How do you manage that disappointment? Yes. And uh, Pastor Dan uh, gives actually two messages in the story about how to get your prayers answered. And um, he, he hits that disappointment head on. Yes. Uh, but also, are you asking, are, are, you, are you active when the Lord tells you to do something or yes. say something, are you actively doing that? Yes. And, um, and is, is your, uh, th all those things that lead into your prayers being effective prayers? So, yeah. I thought it was interesting, and I'm not sure if you meant for this to come out the way or if it was just the way the Holy Spirit led you, but the, new, the, the person who had the least experience with, with church or the world uh, or the word uh, Heather, the young, the 20 something with the purple hair, she seemed in your story to catch on to prayer and to take it with that childlike faith a little bit easier than the woman who had been in and out of church yes. and had a problem with that. She was, she struggled maybe with those disappointments. It, and she, she did. And in fact, um, she questioned her mentor uh, about her mentor said, well, uh, the, 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 each, each one of them was assigned to ask their mentor, how do you pray? Yes. And um, uh, the, her mentor, uh, Monica said, I, if I've got a headache, I just pray, I just uh, say, Lord, it's not your will for me to have this headache. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Yes. And, um, and Connie was offended. Uh, God doesn't have time to take care of your headache. He's a busy guy. That's such a little thing, yes. and it offended her. Yeah, and uh, that is that is reality. That that some people think some, that yeah, way. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was good because she had to she had to confront that in herself and in her walk with God for her to be able to move on because right. it was something that was a stumbling block to her that. Uh, God was interested in every detail of her life. And another thing about that character uh, is that she was the one who was also having to confront some issues about her marriage. You yes. touch on marriage in here in a, a very uh, uh, important way. So share with us some of the truths that you were able to bring out about that. The, the, uh, there is a lot of resistance. Uh, certainly I had it myself uh, related to what the word says about women, uh, wives submitting to their husbands. Yes. And if you want to uh, liven up a conversation at a dinner <laughs> party, you just drop that. Well, wives submit to your husbands yes. and you know, the fireworks starts. Yes. But it came down to not understanding what, what it means to submit. Yes. Uh, the, uh, what I wanted to pull out was, uh, first of all, if it's in the word, it's for your benefit. Yes. So come yes. at it from that direction. And then the next is um, uh, submission is a choice that I make. My submission to the Lord. And once I put that in the context of, no, wait, this is me submitting to the Lord. He's instructing me to do something. He's instructing me to respect my husband. Yes. So I, this is a truth that goes on and on, but I did want to touch on it because 
uh, that is out there. That is a uh, stumbling block yes. uh, for, for many women, especially in today's culture where the reality TV is just fraught with um, disrespectful behavior towards towards husbands yes. and uh, not, not loving wives. And the word has something to say about that. And even though it makes me a little uncomfortable, uh, uh, the word, it's in there for my benefit. Yes. And, and I wanted to make sure that, that the, the character Connie couldn't come at it straight away and say, okay, she's taken in the story baby steps to get Yes, to where you she used needs to be. in the story, the, the mentor instructed her to compare the way that she would treat her boss mm -hmm. and the way that she would confront her boss about something she disagreed with. And her way of confronting her husband was much l less respectful <laughs> than the way that she would have confronted her boss. <laughs> and I love the fact that, as you said, she, stu she, she took the baby steps, she made the list, and she started with the first, first one. one. Yeah. And as she took the action, Action on the word, she saw a change yes. in her relationship with her husband. She she started noticing how I'm speaking to him is affecting the way that he's speaking back yes, to me. That's and right. anytime that we act on the word, right? Anytime because we're doing it because the word said in obedience to the word, we're going to get the word results. Yes. And that's what blessed me so much about your book is that as they took those steps on the word, all of the different characters. And again, we're talking about this book four weeks that Julie Powers has just released and her her um, novel is going to go across this world and bring so many uh, believers, so many new believers, and maybe even bring people into the body of Christ and help people to have a stability because it answers so many questions. And you had them each having to take those steps and learn how to apply the word and learn how to confront the areas that were stumbling blocks to each one of them. Uh, one of them, the character Margaret, who she was the one who had the time on her hands, retired, her husband had just passed away, and her desire was to jump right in and become, you know, fully immersed in good works. And what was the encouragement that her mentor said to her? Uh, Jody, her mentor, told her, hold back a little bit. Uh, she, uh, she wanted Margaret to be solidly planted in the word. Yes. And she wanted Margaret to not jump into absolutely everything, but to wait on the Lord. What is it that you want me to be active in? Yes. Because if you're doing what the Lord asks you to do, you have an anointing for that and you will be powerful. Yes. But if you're scattered all over doing a little bit of this and doing a little bit of that, and even in my own life, you can substitute busyness for time in the word. Yes. And, uh, and Jody's wise counsel to her was make sure that you're solid in the word. You know how to pray. You know how to, how to seek the Lord and then let your, uh, let your activities, let figure out what your ministry is and then move in that because that's where the anointing is. Yes and how important that is in every believer's life, not only new believers, but every one of us, that we don't substitute the activity yeah. and the busyness for our strength in the Lord. Right. And that strength in the Lord can only come by the word and by our time in his presence. And so it's great how you brought each of these things out. Tell me again what, uh, how these truths um, were something that you encountered in your first walk with God. You said that when you first got saved, these were, were things that um, God had, had put in your life. Um, tithing was the other main thing that you hit on. So we better touch just a moment on that before we run out of time today. Uh, I do have my own uh, uh, story about tithing and, and uh, Margaret's uh, mentor, Jody. her story kind of reflects on mine. Um, if you're going to follow the word of God and you believe that it's true, there's things in there that you're going to have to do. And tithing and offering, sowing and reaping is a part of that. And um, I, I took Malachi 3 out and I walked that out myself. And, and like Jody, um, 
I, I, I committed. Yes. Again, baby steps. Yes. I committed 1% <laughs> of my income because at the time single mom you know limited income I, I you know I was in a in a tight spot there and as I walked each of those out God was so faithful that I, I you know I got to I got to my tithe my 10 percent and my offering within three or four months yes and I never missed a beat and w the blessing to me was that I stopped worrying about money Praise God. And in, you stopped worrying about money because you were acting on the word exactly. and the word was producing results. Uh, the little boy in the story who was in the family explaining tithing mm -hmm. in her mentor's family, he used the phrase Jesus math. <laughs> that stuck with me because the multiplication in our life comes because Jesus Christ is Lord yes. of our life. Yes. And you know, if you're watching today, I want to encourage you, everything that we're talking about in in this book, Four Weeks, in Julie's uh, uh, novel, this is, these are truths that apply to every area of our life, but they are effective because we make Jesus the Lord of our life. And if you're watching today and you're saying, I want to have that power in prayer, I want to have that stability in my life that she's talking about in this story. All of these things are the benefits of our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're watching today and you've never received Him as your Lord and Savior, I want to introduce you to the one who died on the cross to pay for your sin, the one who has carried away all of the sin debt that you owed, and He is willing to become your Lord and to give you a new life in Him. So pray this with me today, if you would, please. Just open your heart and out of your heart say, God, I believe. God, I believe. That Jesus Christ died for me. That Jesus Christ died for me. That you raised him from the dead. That you raised him from the dead. I receive today. I receive today. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. As my Lord. As my Lord. As my Savior. As my Savior. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Wash me. Walk me through. Walk me through. This new life you have for me. This new life you have for me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The Bible says if you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead and you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you are saved. If you've prayed that prayer, I celebrate the change that God has worked in your life. You may not even know the fullness. You may not even feel. You don't have to feel anything to be that new creature in Christ. You might, though. <laughs> But I want you to know, the Word of God, this is your answer to everything that you're going to face from this moment on. He has answers. He has victories already scheduled for you, and He wants to walk you into His perfect plan for your life. And so I want to encourage you, you need a church, you need a Bible, and you need to stay involved in both of them. If you're in the Little Rock area and you don't have a church, we invite you to come on out to Faith Builders. We're located at 10500 West Markham. Uh, here in the city of Little Rock. Uh, information is there at buildfaith.net. If you are, are, are in, in wherever you are, a local church and the Word of God, the local church will help you to grow. And again, Julie, thank you so much for being on the program today. I know this book, Four Weeks, that we've been talking about today is going to be so instrumental in so many lives. And I want it to be instrumental in your life. So go to her website access the information to get your copy of four weeks it is available in ebook as well if you're an ebook reader or a kindle reader go online and get get your copy of four weeks and you will be blessed get a copy for the other people in your life too i want to remind you to build your faith and to frame your world by the word of god We wanted to take a couple minutes today and talk to you about what your partnership means to this ministry, to the ministry that God has called my wife and I to, which is building people's faith and framing their worlds by the Word of God. You know, when you look in the book of Luke chapter 8, there's something that we see concerning this subject of partnership uh, as it pertained to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. One day I was reading this, and I don't want to use the word shocked, but it came uh, as a revelation to me that Jesus, while he was on the earth in his earthly ministry, 
he was not able to do everything that he did without the support and the help of his partners. In Luke chapter 8, verse 1, it says, It came to pass afterward, he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, notice, and many others. So there were many others than just the ones that are named here. Notice, which ministered or served or helped him with their substance. So Jesus had partners that traveled with him and ministered to him of their substance. You know, when you partner with this ministry and you partner with us, it's partnership is not something where you just help pay the bills. Partnership enables the voice of this ministry to go further than it is going and do more than it's currently doing. With every partnership gift that comes in, it aids us and enables us to take another step that God is dealing with us to take. And when God begins to deal with us to take these steps, then God begins to lay on the hearts of the partners to become a part of what God's asking us to do. Yes. We are so encouraged every month when we see the partner gifts that come in, when we see uh, the emails that people send us. We just recently received an email from a lady that found us quite by accident, but began to talk to us about how the ministry has helped her and she's beginning to see her destiny yes. and her calling in Christ. Well, you know, that lady found us on our YouTube channel and that was made possible, partners, by you enabling us to get this gospel out on every available voice. If you're not already a partner with Faith Builders Broadcast, would you prayerfully consider becoming one today? I know that God will richly bless you and increase the fruits of your righteousness as you sow into this ministry that God has called us to, which is building faith and framing worlds by the Word of God. So why don't you become a faith builder today? Thank you for your giving. Thank you for being a faith builder. Together we are spreading God's Word across the world through television, print, and the internet. In addition, your giving will produce a harvest in your own life. You can sow online, by mail, or by phone. Thank you for your partnership. I see a church that's a faith building church. I see people coming to this church and having their faith built in the power of God. I see people coming to this church and having their faith built in the integrity of God's Word. I see people coming to this church and learning the principles of faith. People learning what faith is and how to operate the faith that God has given them.